Welcome to this episode of Just One Thing. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Windows Azure Web Roles. My name is Adam Graholsky and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. So, what is the web role? Well, a simple definition is that it hosts an IIS-based website or service. Uh, supports HTTP, HTTPS. You can have cer- certainly have certificates running up there. Um, one of the nice things to note about web roles is that uh, the Windows Azure data centers and Azure itself gives you load balancing. So there are load balancers set up. So if you have multiple instances of a web role running in the cloud, Azure will automatically load balance traffic uh, among the different instances. Something to keep in mind sp- uh, when running in Azure is that that load balancing doesn't have any concept of session affinity or sticky ports. So each request will just get routed to whichever, whichever instance Azure deems the best in terms of, in order to balance traffic. So you can't, requests aren't always going to come to the same server or the same instance. These instances, these web roles, they can be internal only. So if you wanted to create an intranet, you could. Um, but typically and by default, they are for public facing websites. And usually they run an ASP.NET site. So ASP.NET web forms, MVC2, MVC3. Um, you can host WCF services. You can run Silverlight apps with WCF RIA services up, um, in a web role. However, it doesn't have to be just for ASP.NET sites. If you're, um, PHP developer, maybe you do Ruby on Rails, maybe you do Python scripting, um, whatever you do, if it can run on Windows Server 2008, um, Service Pack 2 or greater, more than likely you can get it up and running in Azure. So we're not limited to ASP.NET and the .NET stack. However, since I'm a .NET developer, that's where I'm going to keep my focus. Let's talk a little bit about DNS and how that works in the cloud. Now, not everyone may be concerned with DNS, but it's important just to understand how Windows Azure handles it since it's a very dynamic type of environment. So by default, all services, when you create them in the cloud, they get a .cloudapp.net address. So, you know, whatever service name you define, .cloudapp.net address. Now, of course, you know, if you're deploying an actual production site that you're going to want a URL for branding purposes, so the, the standard approach is to obviously CNAME that. Um, requires a couple of DNS lookup, can be some limited caching uh, due to low TTL, but the point is here, if, if you want a custom domain, you can certainly do it uh, in Azure. Can't, okay, a record use is not supported. You can try and use it. I've seen some people be somewhat successful with it, um, but officially it's not supported. So if it's work, if you get it working, don't expect that it'll continue to work in the future. Uh, finally, uh, about IP addresses, um, sometimes you want to do things directly with an IP address rather than a URL. Um, when, when you deploy things to Azure, you have slots. So you have a, a staging slot and a production slot. Once you deploy something to the production slot, as long as you keep something there, um, you will have a fixed IP address. So it's kind of a virtual IP, but you'll have a, that fixed IP address you can rely on. However, if you de- delete a deployment from production and add a new one into production, it's not guaranteed that you'll have the same IP address. In fact, I wouldn't count on it. You'll probably get a brand new IP address. So if you're dependent on IP address um, and you're kind of hard coding to IP address, I'd recommend not doing that for your Azure based solutions. All right, so let's talk a little bit about full IIS uh, when it comes to Windows Azure. Now the web role will use full IIS by default. Um, with previous versions of, of the environment, uh, full IIS was not an option, but now you can use full IIS. So what, what this means and gives you the ability to do is have one web role that runs many websites all hosted behind the same public IP. So if I have three kind of different branded products, maybe, and they have their own website, I can use one web, one web role to host them all. Uh, in the past, I'd actually have to have three different web roles to host these different websites. And obviously, when we talk about roles and instances, you start talking about really increasing costs. So this is a nice way um, to save money. You can have multiple sites, applications, virtual directories, and bindings. You can model all of that. And what's cool is that um, also with the latest version of Azure is that you can get admin access. It's not complete admin rights, but you can have admin access, which means you can script out. If, if you know how to script out IIS and maybe use PowerShell or, or whatever your favorite tool is, you can actually create scripts that can go in and configure IIS when your instances are starting up. So if there's other things you need or things you want to do, you can certainly script it out. 
in terms of development, the development process, here's what it looks like. So on your local machine, we've talked about this in other episodes, you have Visual Studio uh, to code and deploy to the Compute Emulator, which uses IIS on your local machines to create, create websites and services uh, or instances for you. First time you publish, so you can then publish to Azure, and it takes about anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 minutes uh, to upload your package and get your services running. Um, and then additional uh, publishes won't take quite as long, especially if you do in-place upgrades. Another feature you can use is Web Deploy. So Web Deploy allows you to basically deploy right from Visual Studio to the cloud. So it's not the same as a publish as you're only deploying to one instance, but it gives you that nice iterative development process. So if you want to run something locally and then push it to the cloud quick just to see how it looks, you can certainly do that. But keep in mind, if you have multiple instances running in the cloud, Web Deploy will only deploy to one of those instances. So it's not meant as a, deploy as a true deployment mechanism. It's really meant for iterative development and testing. Then finally, you have deployment of the final version. So once again, this could take anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 minutes um, to deploy the final version of the product to Azure. Now, one thing to note about that time, um, some of the things I've seen is that the bigger instance size I use, the quicker it is to spin up. Kind of makes sense. I get more horsepower the bigger I get, so it makes sense that they'll spin up quicker. So with that, let's, let's take a little bit of a look at what kind of developing with the web role looks like. So I've just got Visual Studio open here. We'll add a new project. We'll add a new project first, and I'm actually not going to start with an Azure project. I'm actually going to start with just a web project. I'll just create an ASP.NET web application because one of the things about Azure is um, some people uh, are confused or don't understand the platform is that they think oh, I've just got to create this new project right away. No, that's not necessarily the case. If you have an ASP.NET website right now, you could potentially move it to Azure. I mean, you need to look at things like, do I have dependencies on on-premise databases? How am I managing session state? But there's no reason why you can't take an existing website and start at least developing locally in Azure. So I've just created a basic ASP.NET web app, and let's run it. Make sure it works first. So you see here, it's running on the ASP.NET development server, so I'm not running in the cloud yet. The local host, and you'll see here, yes, okay, our wonderful default template. Looks great. But now let's say I wanted to put this in the cloud. Well, to do that, very simple. I can add a new project here. This time I'll add a cloud project, just a Windows Azure project. We'll keep the same name. Now notice, um, if you've seen some of the other episodes, you'll see here when you create a Windows Azure project, you get prompted to add roles. I'm not going to add any roles. I don't need to. I already have a website. I just want to, I want to make this website a web role. So to do that, Here's my Windows Azure project, so nothing in it. I can right-click on the Roles folder and click Add. And now I can add a web role project in the solution. So this looks at my solution and figures out what which projects are kind of web apps, you know, ASP.NET, ASP.NET MVC, and it'll allow me to add that as a web role. So I'll click Web Application 2 and click OK. And now this actually becomes a web role. And what happened is not much, to be honest with you. So now I can run this. And you'll, you'll notice my startup project changed to the cloud project. Now if I press F5, we'll run this and it'll actually deploy out to the emulator and spin up pretty quickly here. So let, let's watch what happens. Here's my emulator running. It's actually doing the deployment right now. And now you'll notice I'm running in the cloud. So um, the emulator uses port 81 on the local host. So now this is actually kind of running in the cloud. So I was able just to take this simple ASP.NET app and create a cloud application out of it. But let's, uh, let's, let's close this and let's create a new project. So let's close the solution, create a new project, and we'll create a, a cloud app. Once again, Windows Azure project. But this time I'll just add a couple web roles to it. So we'll add, or I'll just add one actually. Let's call it my web role. Now what I'm going to do, we'll just take, once again, it's just that standard ASP.NET website. We're not really concerned with that implementation. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my instance count. I'm going to go to two, just to show you what happens when I do this on a number of different fronts. So press F5, let this thing get up and running. While that's going on, I'm going to pop open uh, Internet Information Services Manager. So we can kind of watch what the deployment does. And at the same time, I also want my uh, compute emulator UI. 
So you'll see here, so I'm in the compute emulator UI right now and I have my web role. And I actually have two instances running. So as requests come into the website, if I'm tracing them in, I could see, you know, which instance is it running because this emulator will also emulate the load balancing that occurs in Azure. So not all requests as I'm debugging will go to instance zero. Some will go to one, some will go to zero. The emulator manages or emulates or simulates that load balancing for you. So there's my two instances running. You know, I can click home, I can click about. Currently, I don't have any tracing going on here, so I, I can't really see anything in the emulator. But the other thing I want to point out, if I come into my sites, you'll see here what happened. I actually have two websites running. So when the emulator started up, it actually created two, or when, when I deployed this particular solution, because I specified two instances, it created two websites on my local IIS. So when the emulator is running and routing traffic, it's load balancing between these two sites on my local IIS. Pretty slick. Now, once again, the one thing to keep in mind is that when you are running in the cloud, or, or on your local machine, I should say, the more instances you have, the slower it will get. So, I, you know, if you're just going to test a web role, I might keep it to two. You could try three, but I recommend keeping it to two. Otherwise, things could get pretty sluggish for you, even even on a really good machine. At least that's what I've found to date. And that is pretty much it in terms of web roles. So now, obviously... There's a lot more that can go into web roles. Um, there's a lot, I mean, there's a ton of features that go along with Windows Azure, but that was just kind of give you an overview of web roles, what they are, how to create them, show you the fact that you don't actually have to create a, a project from scratch. You can use an existing ASP.NET site as a web role if you want to. Um, but as I said, there are a number of other features we can use with web roles and that are really um, deserving of their own uh edition of just one thing. So hopefully that, that gets you started with web roles.